this convergence that is happening between really philosophies. The philosophy of innovation versus the philosophy of diversity. Inside of the corporate supply chains, those of you who work inside of the corporations, most corporations today, particularly the publicly traded ones, definitely have some type of chief diversity officer, someone who's focused on diversity across the supply chain. At the same time, there's a chief innovation officer and perhaps a chief technology officer. These chief innovation officers, many of them are answering directly to the CEO because they understand that if they do the same thing that they've been doing, they won't be able to outpace because of innovation and technology, the competitors that are coming after their respective market share. It's capitalism at its best, that someone will have the opportunity to come and take market share, and that's just the way capitalism works, like it or not. So you've got the philosophy of diversity, philosophy of innovation, and there's a convergent point there, and my thesis is that from an investable perspective, looking at a lot of companies to invest in, that diversity itself is the basis for innovation. A homogenized environment where everybody looks the same, talks the same, wears the same, it's not really that cool. People like to mix it up a little bit. People like a little splash in their life. They like new ideas, fresh thinking, even though it's hard to implement those ideas. You know, everybody talks about change, right? We run political campaigns about change. We run internal communications campaigns about change. But when we actually have to do it, it's another, another thing. President and CEO of North Central Minority Supply Development Council. Really pleased to be here at the 2015 MBOF Minnesota Business Opportunity Fair. This is always a special event, but this one particularly was special. We were fortunate to have Richard Davis, Chairman, President, CEO of U.S. Bank, uh, the U.S. Bank team, and uh, really their leadership, such as Tom Lux and of course Hector Martinez. This was special for us because it's the first year we've been, for a lot of reasons, the first year we've been in uh, St. Paul at the River Center. And it really afforded us opportunity to meet with uh, another part of the city and the state that we haven't in years. Of course, Mayor Chris Coleman spoke to our group, representatives from the, the governor's office. And also we had a variety of our minority business here as well as our corporate members. My name is Josette Wright Lacey and I'm the president of the National Minority Supplier Development Council. The council is responsible for advancing opportunities for businesses, uh, minority-owned businesses, and corporate members throughout the United States. And we play an important role through our local councils in making sure that we connect the dots between the minority business community and the corporate community. It's very impressive. I love doing these events because it gets you on the ground floor. It, you see the excitement and the enthusiasm of the participants. We've got lots of good corporate support here in St. Paul. That's always very, very gratifying. And the MBEs are just excited to, to come and meet people, tell people what they can do, and hopefully walk away with some business. Hector Martinez with 
uh, U.S. Bank. I am the chairman of the North Central Minority Supplier Development Council. You know, a lot of what I see as my goal are to be able to develop a strong board of directors so that we can build a solid foundation from there to be able to have programs and different things that will help MBEs and corporations. My name is J.R. Rowland. I work with JT Services based out of Hugo, Minnesota currently. Um, we focus on diesel engine solutions for a lot of production companies right now. Honestly, this conference has been amazing. Uh, a lot of the speakers have been incredibly helpful with the information that they're giving out. Um, and there seems to be just a huge focus in Minnesota right now to get a lot of funding to these uh, diverse companies. Um, it's, it's wonderful to see, honestly. My name is Tanya Woodbury. I'm a Supply Diversity Manager at Wells Fargo in Supply Chain Management. And uh, Wells Fargo is here because we want to support the MBEs or the minority business owners in the Minneapolis area, Minnesota area, um, to show our support that our communities and our vendors should look just like our customers. We have a huge diverse population of clients, customers, and so our sourcing and supply chain um, processes and procedures and vendors should also be just as diverse as our customers and our clients, as well as our internal team members. So Wells Fargo supports organizations like the North Central Minority Supplier Development Council in their quest to develop, to provide access, um, to help support uh, MBEs in their quest to grow their businesses, which in turn grow jobs in the communities. We have representatives from all parts of the expanded region. We have all the states here. We have all the major companies in those states represented. I'm very pleased with the way it's come together. Uh, and from a very rocky start, I think that Dwayne and his leadership team and his executive committee have done a very, very good job of making sure that we really harness the power that's here in this part of the country. We look at diversity in the form of gender or in the form of tenure or retirement exposure or race. And I also want to make sure this is clear to you. Diversity is just that. It's a celebration of all the differences we all bring into any meeting, any conversation, any moment in time. It is not uniquely one form of diversity and be very careful not to be, misunderstand the people you're talking to might have that paradigm. So check for understanding when you speak to diversity and you speak to minority and make sure that you all agree what that means because it's got a much more provocative uh, definition than it used to. And I thought I would just show you here that there are a couple of things that we need to speak to on diversity. One is to make sure that we define it. And the other one is that we make sure we know what inclusion means. And these words you can read for another time because I promise you I'd move more swiftly. But what I want to say is it's the and part that matters. Diversity is the state of being. Inclusion is an, is an option and a goal. It's putting them together that makes the difference. To choose to be inclusive because you celebrate diversity is the answer. And if anybody separates the two or misses the point, they're still back in the dark ages. You too should speak to minority supplier opportunities as this together, that we are fully the most capable, competent, local, excited, enthusiastic, and able partners. And we should be included because we deserve to be there. We have long been prepared for this moment. It's a very big deal here because those two belong together and I want to put your head wrapped around that. You know, whenever you put together something um, as important and as special as this, uh, it comes with a lot of hard work, but I will say that my expectations are being met because I feel that we've got a large number of people turning out um, and actually coming to the event as well as exhibitors. So part of the deal that I see us doing is being able to educate, inform, and create awareness of the impact that MBEs are making in our economy as well as the impact that it's making in corporate's bottom line. You know, when you look at business and the business imperative, it's about being able to drive value through reducing costs and improving efficiency. So I feel that uh, the organization is definitely continues to build off of that. Um, and with the strong organizational uh, uh, background that we have in our board of directors, as well as other constituents that support us, things are gonna look really, really great. Well, obviously, diversity and inclusion is not gonna be just a program, surely. It's gonna be the way we have to operate. Uh, the demographics of this country are shifting at a rapid rate, and it doesn't make sense to me that you exclude people or marginalize people based upon color based upon their ethnic identity or based upon their religion or their sexual orientation. So that to me means that everybody who's ready, willing and able to play should be able to play. And our economy is going to require that. I think it's been a great combination of effective 
um, traditional yet innovative content in the programming, as well as an opportunity for MBEs to really get a close-up contact with procurement officers, supply diversity professionals, and just to hear from other organizations on how do they become partners, how do they source, and what they need to do to prepare their companies to be ready for that opportunity when it comes. So I like that Dwayne and his team have thoughtfully looked at what's the most benefit for not only our MBE members, but our corporate members so that they stay engaged, so they continue to support through sponsorship and resources um, and human and intellectual capital to move forward the, the goal and the objectives of supply diversity. My name is Tamsin and I am an account manager with the Kelly Mitchell Group. We're an IT staffing firm based out of St. Louis office, but we also have an office here in the Twin Cities supporting a lot of the Fortune 500 clients with their IT needs. Well, the reason why we're here is we're a women-owned business and we like to support other minorities as well. A lot of our clients are here today, so we're here to support them, but also see how we can support other clients that we don't already have here within the Twin Cities market. This is not our first event, and we come back every year. It's been very beneficial to our company, um, and then it has introduced us to a lot of other firms here in the, in the Twin Cities market. But the point is for you all to make sure that you stay true to your purpose. Whatever you do, you've got to love it. And you've got to convey that sense of love, and you've got to make that part of the kind of the nth degree reason why you're such a good partner. It's not the technicalities, it's not the function, it's not the details, it's what you believe in it. It's what you think of it. If you represent another company and it's something other than your own person and your own name, you've got to really believe in it. And I think whatever it is, you can find a way to make purpose part of your story, and I would encourage you to make sure that's part of the story you tell. My goal is to make it easy for our corporate members and our MBEs to come together through technology, through programming, uh, through more effective networking, because I think once corporations truly understand the value that MBEs bring to the table, to the bottom line, I think it's a, it's a no-brainer. And so if I can make that easier to make those connections, that's what I want to do. Being able to have corporations such as U.S. Bank, such as Target, um, and Best Buy, Cargill, Medtronic, and many others that are part of this organization, it is important that we have their support and that we have their leadership support. So it's not just supplier diversity, it's about everybody in corporate, starting from the CEO down to um, the buyers and the people that are actually making the day-to-day -day transaction uh, work happen. So it is of utmost importance that we have corporate support on all levels and they need to support uh, not only the council but they need to support the MBEs and they need to support the programs that actually talk and dis develop and distinguish what a minority business enterprise is because a lot of folks don't understand how sophisticated and how developed uh, our constituents are and in order for us to be able to do that we need to have the corporate support. This is an opportunity for leadership to step up and show what possibilities can happen. We get around people who have ideas, great programs, great companies, and give them the benefit of the next first shot. And that's what we're talking about here. And everyone in this room is gathered with the idea of trying to make a future that's better than the current day. So I'm all for that. It's really special to me because this is a new opportunity for us as we expand, as we added 44 sponsors. And I think it's an indication, it is an indication of how well and how far we've come as an organization with the support of our board and our staff to really make a difference in the communities of color. We have a bright future and we think when we go to 2016 at the uh, U.S. Bank Stadium that it will reaffirm that we are making an even greater impact on bringing more jobs to our communities of color, more business to our community of color, and making a lasting impression on our community.